Welcome to Bosch's technical support on demand video series. How secure is your video? With the complexities of IP video today and the variations of how vendors deploy and store their video, this common question of how secure is your video can really be answered by asking three other questions. How secure is your network? How are you recording your video and in what format? And how secure is your vendor's VMS? There's a fourth supplemental question as well. Is the attack from the outside or the inside? As we move through this discussion, never forget to examine your internal weaknesses as well. If we're looking at the view from the outside, basic external attacks are typically executed in three phases. Network enumeration, vulnerability analysis, and exploitation. Simply stated, these three different phases mean I have to find your network, find a weakness based on your operating system or application, and then exploit those weaknesses to gain control of a machine in your system. If I gain remote access to your network based on performing the previous three steps, I now have to move on to question two, which is how are you recording your video and what format is it in? There are many variables to this question. Are your cameras analog or IP devices? Are they fixed or are they PTZ? Are they H.263 or H.264 devices? When dealing with IP video devices, you also need to know what operating system is installed on your encoders and cameras. Is it Linux, Windows, or does the vendor create its own proprietary OS? You should ask your camera manufacturer if there's been any penetration testing done against the OS platform installed on their cameras. Other variables to consider from a security standpoint, are your devices streaming RTSP video, TCP, or are they using SSL encryption? The final variable of this question is, where is your video being sent and what is the final format in which it's being recorded? Are you recording to a DVR, an NVR, an iSCSI, either at the edge or centralized, or are you utilizing a VRM? If I've hacked into your network and I want to find your DVR or NVR, I have two options. The first is to ping sweep your entire production network and hack away until I find one of your devices. However, an ICMP sweep in a well-managed network should set off every alarm in the facility if you have an intrusion detection system. Option two is to remotely capture and analyze network video traffic until I find IP packets with H.264 or video information and then hack the destination address. If you're using IP encoders and cameras that record directly to iSCSI or edge recording, you have an added twist. Encoders with built-in intelligence at the edge typically run a proprietary kernel designed to run in limited memory space. This leaves no options to hack into the edge device and these devices typically do not place any video on the network until it's requested by a client or assigned to a target. Most DVR and NVR applications record in a proprietary file format. These can be in any format from AVI files to G64 files and are usually located inside the DVR or on a SCSI or network drive that's attached to the NVR or DVR. So if I do find my way back to your NVR or DVR and I hack into it, I now have to wade through terabytes worth of video clips that are 3 to 10 minutes in length. To view these video clips, you would need to know what vendor that you're trying to view video clips from, because typically you can't see the recorded video clips unless you have that vendor's viewer. If I do find something I'm interested in and tamper with the video, once anything within the file has changed, the video will not play back. If the video is watermarked, any authentication attempts will fail. If your Bosch IP encoders or cameras are recording in a true iSCSI or Edge format, they are recording in a block format in a .dat file structure, which means there are no true video files to browse or view. In a Bosch iSCSI scenario, iSCSI targets are viewed as LUNs and not network shares. IQNs of the encoders and management system can also be added to a privilege list to restrict access to an iSCSI target. So what are some best practices when dealing with any CCTV system? The first is segmentation. You do not want video traffic on your production network, especially if your video system consists of hundreds of cameras. Next, you should have a strict password policy in place. All devices 
should have passwords with a minimum of eight characters. SSL encryption should be used on all video transmissions. Intrusion detection systems should be deployed on your network and in your DMZ to monitor for any nefarious activity. Lastly, restrict access to your video system. Why? In most cases, the greatest risk to your CCTV system and its recorded video comes from internal employees. Issues that can occur when your system is not properly secured are as follows. Incident video ends up on YouTube within 24 hours. Incident video is deleted, either intentionally or accidentally. Cameras are diverted from an incident area. Recording is turned off intentionally. Storage platforms are formatted by untrained technicians. When choosing a video system, you want a system that will allow you to implement granular permissions to users and groups for tasks such as exporting, deleting, protecting, and unprotecting video. You want a system that will log activities of all users, including administrators, and you want to make sure that the installing technician has actually been trained on the system that you purchased. This concludes this tutorial. Thank you.